What's up? This is Carcino, man. Wow. Let's get into it. Brian McKnight is one of the greatest soul singers. Smooth R&B, classic R&B soul. And songwriter. And now he's back at one. With his family, his children, son Nico and uh, Brian BJ Jr. Uh, listen, I see Brian McKnight in a situation where it's difficult. You know, he's actually coming here in about a couple of weeks. But the problem with his range and the way he's had this, like, normally falsetto singers, their careers don't last that long. You know, especially when they've been rhyme. I mean, singing for a very long time. You know, some people who has a very strong falsetto and they have good range they could last for a long period of time but normally their voices change and their careers you know is limited but his was like timeless now Brian McKnight definitely is one of the greatest to ever do it and his children came out and called him a deadbeat dad now in 2009 I remember him bringing his children out to show them to the world the two sons and they went out to air him out basically like we're airing him out so I'm like uh, here we go you know, problems. So, we got, I don't like to do children. You know, I, I don't like to do like 50 and his son, you know, when he was fighting with his son. I don't like to do these, you know, parents fighting with the kids. This is like painful stuff to do. For me because this is children you know I mean like kids with their parents but then when you turn around and look at it you go okay wait a minute <laughs> these dudes aren't kids and babies and then it brings up the uh, situation of giving your children too much to the point where is it helpful or is it hurting them that they don't know how to to make it on their own they don't know how to survive. You know, and that's what I think he did. He, I think he kind of enabled them by giving them too much. You know, and once he spoke, I was able to hear the way he spoke. And I said, okay, there it is. We have factual confirmation now. That's what it's all about. They want money. They don't want what he got. They want money. They want to have his success. The father's success. The father went... The father went... And put his career on the line. That's what the father did. Put his career on the line. Took his sons out there and said, you know what? I'm in here working with you guys. And we're going to just do something together with us, the kids, the children. Now, we take, for instance, what they were doing. Or what he was doing, uh, Brian McKnight. 
he had every intentions of working things out with his children and doing things with his kids. He bought them apartments and told them, like, look, y'all can stay here for two years, but then y'all got to go. You know what I'm saying? But I'll, wait a minute, hold on. Let's listen to Brian McKnight say it himself. It goes a lot swifter than that because I don't like talking about this stuff. Hey guys, it's Brian McKnight here. Uh, I've been traveling about 17 hours to Guam. I have a concert tonight and I got off the plane to some of the most heinous craziness I've ever seen in my life that my oldest son Brian would post that I'm abandoning my children and why, I suppose, because I have a new family, and I guess this stems from a post that I made the other day about my son, Jack, who I'm very proud of, which isn't to say I'm not, and haven't been proud of my other children, but I was proud of this one for the things that he did that day. We'll get back to that in a second. Anyone who knows me knows, over the last 20 years, 30 years now, as a matter of fact, that I've been there for my children every step of the way, until recently. And let's be clear, my two sons are 30 and 27. 30 and 27. Not 13, but 30 and 27. Now, my daughter's about to turn 18. That's another story I'll get to in a second. Uh, I've never missed a day of child support. I've never done anything adverse to my children whatsoever. I've always been, I've always been there. I've always been there with advice, whether they took it or not. I've always been the sounding board, and I've always been the one that tried to, to help them achieve whatever dreams they were wanting to reach out for. Um, I guess one of my only faults is that I gave my children everything that I didn't have in the hopes that they would appreciate it, because I know how much I would have appreciated it when I was their age. Um, I would tell you as parents out there, entitling your children is probably one of the worst things you can do, and I know I am guilty of that. Um, for whatever reasons, I'm guilty of that. Um, tough love is a tough thing as a parent to try to institute to your children, because you want to help them as much as you can, and I did as much as I possibly could. When I stopped doing that for them, BJ was 25 and Nico was 22. And it wasn't like I completely cut them off at that point. That, that happened much later. But I've been there. Um, when I put them out of my house, I gave them an apartment for two years. I said, guys, this is it. This is the time to grow up. I'm giving you two years. I'm going to pay for everything for two years, but you're going to have to work or do something because at the end of those two years, that's going to be it. It's time to be men here, guys. It's time to grow up. At the end of those two years, they hadn't done any of it. Um, it was just right around the time that Leilani and I had gotten together. Leilani was working at Children's Hospital. And let's be clear, Leilani has been one of the only people who's been an advocate to keeping us together, to keeping us having a relationship because she wants to have the nuclear family as much as I did. And they have spit in her face at every turn. She got them jobs at the hospital, $18 an hour with benefits and with the option of the hospital actually paying for them to go back to school. They said, and I quote, that they knew they didn't, they didn't want to stop smoking and they would have to pass a drug test. And the day I had the doctors looking into it, and he goes on there, you know, taking a big puff, of which is fine. If you want to smoke, that's fine. I'm not saying that I'm saying that that's bad, if that's your choice, that's your choice. But what I'm telling you is that we have been advocates for them every step of the way. Now let's go to the part where we have been estranged. Again, we talk about abandonment. We're not, this. I'm not abandoning them. We are estranged, which happens more often than not in this particular situation. BJ broke into our home a few months ago and he put X's on the eyes of our wedding photos. And then he put a photo of my first wedding on Leilani's vanity. It was at that moment, and after I heard him say, and was pointed to from other friends of mine that saw his posts on social media, that he, he basically said that I was better off dead to him than alive. I was more valuable to him dead than alive. And that was the end of me dealing with him. If you look at my Instagram, you'll see that not my last video, but the video before that, 42, the song was written by Brian and I, and it was directed the video by Nico and I went on and I said how proud I was of Nico at the time and I really really was he did an awesome job in that video um, even before that two, less than two years ago these other two gentlemen who stood up for me as my best man in my wedding so abandonment deadbeat dad I, I'll reiterate I've never missed a day of child support 
I've been there every step of the way. BJ, he talks about Jack's new car. Jack, BJ had three brand new cars before he was 22. But I'm not talking about material things. It's none of this has anything to do with money. It's about respect. Respect goes both ways. And even in family, there's a line that shouldn't and should not ever be crossed. Uh, it, it's crazy to me that people will just believe anything. And I thought it was important to set the record straight and let you guys know that Abandonment has nothing to do with any of this. Dead be dead, I've been there every step of the way. And let's also remember that these kids are 30 and 27, mm. not 12. It's time for grown men to be grown men. And I'm sorry that tough love happens to, to be this way. Um, and it's, I do wish them the best. I want them to have and to reach their dreams and their full potential. But like any other man in the world, you, you got to go out there and you got to take it. You see? You see? You got to go out there and you got to take it. All these people are looking for handouts. Handouts. It's ridiculous. I'm glad he said it so I didn't have to. 30 and 27. And they out here talking about, I got to dead be dead. God, wife, the new wife came through, which they don't like the new wife. Come in there, break in the house, put X's over their family pictures, and gonna put a picture of the first wife in there, and then when they were kids in the house. How disrespectful. But like he said, you know, he spoiled them, gave them all these things when they had the money rolling. Spoiled his sons. And now they figure we were singing with dad. Things was finna blow up. And things just gonna fall on their lap. And you see what's the results. Weed. They love smoking so much. They couldn't give up the smoke. Got them a job at the hospital, which was going to pay for them to go back to school. Nah, they don't want that. Had a place paid for for two years. All they had to do was get themselves together. They had two years. They hadn't done anything. They want to live off dad forever. They don't want to do nothing. That's sad. That's real sad. It's painful. I'm telling you, this pains me. Because I've seen this cycle happen you know, on many levels. So it's not about money. And he's right about that. We've seen this happen. Overgrown kids staying at home with the moms. Don't want to leave. They ain't prepared to leave. They haven't been taught. They haven't been trained how to go out and live on their own. And they got to fend for self. So. We've seen how these things uh, end up. Normally it's not good. But I'm glad he did it instead of me because I can't do it. I really can. I do not like dealing with situations like this. I just think that it's anybody <laughs> giving light to that after hearing this. Not, I know who I believe. I'm out.